Welcome to our 21st tutorial on Erlang. Today we're going to build a release version of the factorial system using SysTool. SysTools is basically a module that contains functions needed to create a release build for application. Things like scripts and boot files etc. So with no further ado, let's just get started. The first thing I have to do is just to fix some errors that was in the last tutorials. If we open the factorial system.app file, as you can see with the application, it should be applications and I don't need amnesia as part of the applications since that the factorial system is actually going to load up amnesia instead of amnesia being loaded before the program. So now that it's removed, the application is going to load amnesia from the database logic as we have here, amnesia.start. Now, back to the main topic. To build a release version, the first thing we need to make is a .rel file, which is a release file. So we simply click on new file. We want to call the release file factorial release dot rel. I'm just going to write and then explain afterwards. So what we have here is the release version. The factory release version is 1.0 and the ERT, the Erlang runtime, the current version is that is running is 5.10.1 and we also have to include kernel, stdlib, sasl, amnesia and a factorial system and we need to put in the version of a factorial system. So if I open factorial.app we have version 2 everything needs to match or else we're going to get an error. Right here I have the version as empty. So when we pack the application all these files will be will accompany the the release the release file. Right here it's empty because I'm not actually 100% sure about the current version that is running. So the best way for me to find out is to rebuild the application and we we'll run it. What we have to do now is call SysTools and we're going to call make script and we're going to specify our release file which is factorial release and we get an error about the versions. It's telling us it's empty and this is the version we should have running. So if we go to Amnesia, just bring 4.8, SASL, 2.3.1, STDLib, 1.19.1, the kernel, which is 2.16.1. And again, we just rebuild it. and we just rerun it again and everything comes up as OK and if we refresh this we should get the new the two new files which is factorial release the boot factorial release the script and now the next part is to make a tar file which is what we're going to give the person we're sending the application to so we're just going to copy and paste the factorial release into the root so it's going to have so the root is going to have factory release dot boot, factory release dot rel, factory release dot script, and now we want to put everything together into a tar. So we go to sys tools and we change script to tar. And we simply enter and we get OK. So if we refresh, we should get a tar file. And there we go. 
.gz file. So now that we have our factory release .gz, just to test it, what we want to do is extract it, and we do once more. If you have Ubuntu or any Linux, you should be able to just extract everything in one go. So in the GZ file, we have release and we have lib, and lib contains and lib contains factory system kernel amnesia sasl scd lib and they all contain the dot beam files and if we look into the release we have 1.1 which is the version of the release we have it right here and we have the release dot ariel before we proceed to the next stage of testing the release i personally prefer to write a batch file to do some work for us instead of constantly typing everything into a command prompt. So let's open a text editor. I'm going to be using Sublime Text for this and new file. So the first thing is to start from the root. The next stage is basically to create a, a database schema. Uh, there could be an easier way of doing it but I've tried so many times and I can't seem to get Erlang to create the database file if, I'm, if I was using a .boot file to boot the application. The way I finally figure out how to do this is simply to, I'm going to copy and paste and then I'll explain what I did. So after changing to the root, I want to navigate to the Erlang binary location which is ERL.5.1 and I want to set a default directory for Amnesia so Amnesia will be created here user blah 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 desktop lib which is this location here so we're going to have the Amnesia database created into this folder and we also in order for that to work we want to create a database for the node foo at 192.168.1.10 and we want to set the cookie to one two three four and then we want to run a script a startup function when Erlang loads up and we want to call the amnesia create schema and we want to create schema for the node foo at blah 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 and afterwards we want to stop the amnesia oh we want to stop the Erlang runtime this way we create the amnesia schema. The next step is to copy and paste again. So the next step is almost the same. So the next step is we navigate back to the Erlang binary location. We want to set the path for the factory system to. We want to set the path for the eBin. So all this bin file we want to set our path to it. And we want to call the dot the dash boot. So it's going to boot the start dot boot file, which is in the release folder. So in the release folder we have a start dot boot. So it's going to call this boot function, which is going to run everything. And we want to create a node as well, the full node, and set the cookie. Now let's save as. So I saved the file as runner.bat. Now let's test and see how it works. So we just double click it and we get yeah. Now we have everything running. Progress report, everything is successful. And we have the full node running. And if we open the lib file, we should have the amnesia factorial right here so we have the amnesia folder here and uh, let's test this by calling let's see fact first of all let's see what's running by calling application which applications and we have a factorial system running version 2 
Amnesia, SASL, ERT, ERT um, STD Lib, and Kernel. So let's call Factorial Client. And we want to store comments. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Yep, we want to store comments in the current node. And the comment will be UX Learner. So, and we have comment has been saved for full blah blah blah. Let's save another comment to UX Learner 2. And we have that. Now let's try get a comment for that current node and change that. And it's a function called get comment. So we get a little error. And what does the error say here? Something about factorial database not existing. So what we do is if you get such error or your file not existing we call amnesia info and we just navigate to opti disk directory oh it's looking at the wrong directory is not used I think that's the problem so we have to check our bat file so let's just quit this Um, if we just edit the runner, if we edit the runner, and we just look for the problem here. Okay, what we can do is we can just reset it again here, since we're running M since we're running Erlang again. So it makes sense to call Amnesia directory and specify that directory. So we save, and if we open our Lib, we can just delete this. Now let's just test it again. We double click on it, run, and we have our file back. Now let's test again. And fingers crossed, everything goes according to plan. So let's call factorial client store comments node. Hello. Perfect. And UX learner. And before we go to the next stage, let's go amnesia. Amnesia info. I don't like surprises. Oh, and look at this. OptiDisk directory blah 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 is used and we have a disk copy we can also have both disk and RAM copies okay so it should work now fingers crossed and so we want to get all the comments for the specific node get and voila receive hello received UX learner OK and final test is let's go factorial client factorial of 10 and we get that quit so now that the runner is in the folder the zip the GZ folder. If we send the application to someone else with a README, they can simply just run the BAT file and everything will be ready and set for them. But you have to understand that the user have to change the runner to suit the own needs or the, the layout of their computer. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I'll see you in the next tutorial.